Hey, uh, my name is Brent, and I'm going to show you some activities you can do with uh, this Georgia Standard we have here. And it is S5 L2, and we're going to be focusing on B. Now it says, students will recognize that offspring can resemble parents in inherited traits and learned behaviors. And then B, discuss what a gene is and the role genes play in the transfer of traits. Teacher note, be sensitive on this topic since biological parents may be unavailable. Um, this activity I have is meant to show students the different types of how genotypes come together and they make offspring from two parents. What you're going to need for this activity, um, if you have whiteboards for your students, you can give them a whiteboard and a marker and eraser. If not, let them use pencil and paper. I'm also going to attach a worksheet along with this that's got Punnett squares on it. Uh, that's what the markers are going to be used for is to draw Punnett squares. So I mean, if they can, if you just want to use paper and pencil, they can do that too. But as a teacher, you're going to need eggs of different colors, at least three different colors like purple, uh, pink, and orange. And you can let one of them be the dominant trait, one of them be the recessive trait, and then one of them that's a mixture, you know, it's got uh, one dominant trait and one little uh, recessive trait, the, uh, hetero, the heterogeneous type that's a different. Um, for mine, I've chose six. I used the colors purple, pink, and orange. Those are the three that work together. And I've also used blue, yellow, and green. And so let me go ahead and explain this activity. What you've got here is you've got look at the as these plastic eggs that they pop apart okay look at this plastic egg as two parents okay the purple side is the dominant trait let's look at my worksheet here that I have pulled up okay this is a plastic egg genetics lab okay here's our little chart now like I said each each egg like one half of it is a parent and this half of it would be a parent and so the purple half would be big P, big P, and then the orange half would be big P, little P. So as you see, the six colors here, they all have a specific genotype. And so that is important for what we're doing. So let, let's do one as an example here. All right, we have our two parents, like I discussed a while ago, and we said purple is, the, is a dominant parent. It has big P, big P. So this is a Punnett square, big P, big P, all right, and then the other one is orange, and that's a big P and a little P, because it's heterogeneous, okay, now let's fill out our Punnett square, so the top one would be big P, big P, this one over here would be big P, big P, this one down here would be big P, little P, and this one over here would be big P, little P. Now, the thing with the eggs is that the answers are on the inside. Now you can use M&M's, Skittles, beads, whatever you like to use. I use puff balls. Now let's go back to my computer here and we'll see here's the different the different uh, genotypes. Now for us we had two two of them that had big P's so two of the pu uh, puff balls in here should be purple and our other one was a big P and a little P and we had two of them so big P, little P so we should have two oranges. So in our egg here, we should have two purples and two oranges. And let's see what we got. Fair enough. One bit purple, two purple, one orange, two orange. And so that's the answer for that one. Um, I got a couple more we're going to do just for example so you get the idea. Um, let's go with an all yellow one. Now once again though, remember, that's a parent, that's a parent. So let's take a look here. What is yellow? Little b, little b. So each parent is going to be little b, little b. So let's do our Punnett square again. And this is why I say sometimes the dry erase boards are nice to have because, see, the students can just erase. But if you want something to make sure that they're understanding it, you need to let them put it on paper so they can turn it in for a grade. All right? So we said yellow is little b, little b. So one parent, little b, little b. And the other parent, little b, little b. Let's fill out our Punnett square. Little b, 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 little b. So they all have the same genotype. And we know that little b, little b is yellow. So we should have four yellows in this egg. Let's 
pop it open. There they are. Four yellows. So that's our offspring for that one. So there's the yellow egg. Alright, I got two more examples that we'll try. Let me make sure this is one of them. Yes. Okay. This one here, what's our two? We got a yellow parent and a blue parent. Okay, let's wipe off our Punnett square. Okay, let's take a look. We have a yellow, so that means we have little b, little b, and we have a blue, which is big B, big B. So let's fill it out. Uh, big B, big B at the top for one parent, and then little b, little b for the other parent. So let's fill it out. And so this Punnett square is going to have, once again, all of the same. Big B, little b, big B, little b, big B, little b. So if looking over on our computer, big B, little b is green. So we should have four greens in here, if we're not mistaken. And there they are, four green offspring. Because that's the way the genotype is made up. And we've got one more here. We're going to do one that's all purple. Let's erase this. And as we talked about purple earlier, it's a dominant trait. So you've got two dominant parents. So it, you're going to have big P, big P for one parent, and big P, big P for the other parent. Fill out our Punnett square. This one is pretty obvious what it's going to be since it's all dominant traits. All the offspring is going to be dominant. So big P, big P, we should have four purples in here. And there they are, the four purple offspring. Now this, that was an example of four, and you saw how quick I went through that. Um, you, I'd say do at least maybe 10, even maybe 12 or 15 different combinations and let the kids do them. An important note though is that you'll notice that purple, pink, and let me see what the other one was, orange. Purple, pink, and orange all stayed together and blue, yellow, and green all stayed together. And the reason for that is purple, its, tra it's uh, trait was big P, big P, and pink, its trait was little P, little P, and the orange was big P and little P. We can't mix big P and big P with like say Let's take green, a big B and a little b, because when you mix that together, we wouldn't have an offspring for that. So you're only going to have three colors per, per each one that you do. So be sure not to mix those up, because you're only going to have the three traits that mix together. So you're going to have a dominant trait, a recessive trait, and then you'll have a heterogeneous trait with like one dominant trait and one recessive trait. So you can choose more than six colors. You could use up to nine, twelve, however many colors you can think of. But I like the eggs because it does allow you to be very versatile. Allows you to switch it up and put them together, like the you know the blue and the green, the orange and the pink. It lets you mix them up and choose different colors. And, and these last. You can use these year after year after year. And another reason I use the puff balls in mine is because well next year I can use those puff balls again. If you use any kind of food, whether it be Skittles, M and M's, or anything like that, you're gonna probably you're gonna have to throw it away at the end of the year. And uh, but beads work well, puff balls work well, anything that can be used over and over. And you can just go to Hobby Lobby and get some puff balls and stuff. And the eggs are very cheap if you'll get them after Easter time. Uh, the dollar store, places like that, always put these on sale, and you can get them very very cheap. And so I think this is an excellent activity to show how you can how you take two parents and you get an offspring from the different genotypes and with the use of a Punnett square. Uh, like I said, I'll, I'll also attach the worksheet that's got a lot to it. If we will, we'll, we'll run through the worksheet right here before we end the video. Here is the, here's the title of it. And as you can see, the grade level, you can use this all the way through high school if you want to. Now as we go down, there's your different materials, and here's our chart, all the you know, dominant, recessive, and then a heterogeneous trait. And as you go down, you can see, here's the answer key. This is all the different, with just those six colors, this is all the different, um, different type of possibilities that it could come out to be. 
with uh, two parents, this is all the different offspring possibilities. As we keep going, this is a procedure. I explained the procedure to you how to do it. Um, this is for the children. This is their uh, table that they can use and see. It also provides them with the genotypes of each one. And as you see, they group them together. Purple, orange, and pink are together, and blue, green, and yellow. So you don't mix these two together. And so, once again, so here's some Punnett squares. Like I said, if you just want to print off this worksheet, you can. And it allows the students to fill in the Punnett squares themselves and do it. And there's a lot of those on there. And it's even got a results sheet that they can fill out. And so I feel like that worksheet is uh, can be very helpful. Uh, but this is just an idea I throw out there for that standard. And uh, I hope this helps you teach, gen teach genetics in your classroom. And uh, thank you for watching.